Okay, in this video I want to talk about factoring using the greatest common factor. And in uh, the examples I have, there's another one down there, we're simply just going to factor out the greatest common factor. So, again, the greatest common factor would be the largest factor that we could divide evenly into every term. And basically to do this, the way I think about it at least, what I'm, what's going through my mind, is the first thing is I see that in my first example there are three terms. I see the 2x cubed y to the 8th, 6x to the 4th y squared, and then the 10x to the 5th y to the 10th. So I see three terms and what I do is I first look numerically. Um, I look at the coefficients. I see a positive 2, a positive 6, and a positive 10. And I think what's the greatest common factor of those three numbers? Well I believe that would be a 2 and then next what I do is I start looking at my variables. So I notice that there's an x in the uh, first one, also in the second term, and in the third term. So that means I can certainly factor out an x. And then I have to pull out an x to a certain, I have to think to what power. And there's a 3, a 4, and a 5. Basically what you do is you just pull out the smallest exponent. So we're going to factor out an x to the third. Likewise, we have a y, y, and a y, so I'm going to pull out a y. Again, I look at the exponents. There's an 8, a 2, and a 10. The smallest exponent is a 2, so I'm going to factor out y squared. Okay, so now we've pulled out the greatest common factor. So I have to think what would go back inside the parentheses so that when I multiply things out, I get what's above it. If you start with three terms, if you factor something out, inside the parentheses you still have to have three terms. So be careful about that. So I think 2 times what is 2? Well, just 1. And then I think x cubed times what is x cubed. Again, just times 1. We wouldn't need anything. Um, and then I think y squared times what would be y to the 8th. And again, since we're, we have to add exponents, we would need a y to the 6th. So notice if I multiply 2x cubed y squared times 1y to the 6th, I'll get my first term. And then I just do the same thing. I think 2 times what is positive 6. Well, I would need a positive 3. I think x to the 3rd times what would be x to the 4th. Well, again, since we add exponents, we would just need an x to the 1st. And y squared times 1 would be y squared. So I don't write the times 1 because it's going to be the same thing as 3x to the first anyway. And last but not least, I think 2 times what is positive 10? We would need a positive 5. Uh, I think x to the third times x to what power would be x to the fifth? Well, we would need an x squared. And then we would need, I believe, a y to the eighth power, because y squared times y to the eighth will give us y to the tenth. And now we factored out the greatest common factor. So. Let's do the same thing in part B. I'll step through the, this one a little bit faster. So I see a 6, a 3, and a negative 24. Well, the biggest number, the greatest common factor of those three numbers would be a 3. I notice there's an A and a B in all of the terms. So I can factor out A to some power. I can factor out B to some power. So let me look at the exponents on the A's. It looks like there's a 10, a 7, and a 5. I pull out the smallest exponent. I look at my b's, I've got b to the 8th, to the 4th, and to the 6th. Again, I pull out the smallest exponent, which would be b to the 4th. And then I just, you know, have to be careful again about what I put in the parentheses. So 3 times 2 would give us 6. a to the 5th times a to the 5th would give us a to the 10th. And I believe b to the 4th times b to the 4th would give us our b to the 8th. 3 times positive 1 would give us a positive 3, so I'm going to stick the 1 in there, it doesn't hurt. I think a to the 5th times what will be a to the 7th. We would need an a to the 2nd power, and then I believe uh, b to the 4th times 1 would give us our b to the 4th, so I'm not going to write another uh, times 1 in there. So I think 3 times what is negative 24? Well, negative 8. a to the 5th times what is a to the 5th? just times 1, and then b to the 4th times what would be b to the 6th. Again, since we're adding exponents, we would need a, a b squared. So 
Let me erase my parentheses. He's a little far away. I'll stick it right there. So we have now factored out the greatest common factor in this case. And you can always check that you've pulled out the greatest common factor. Just look at what's inside the parentheses and make sure there's nothing left that you could factor out um, in both examples. So for example, in our last one, the first term does have an a to the fifth, an, 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 a variable of a and b, but the second one only has a, and the third one only has a b. So there's there's simply nothing else that we can factor out of there. So even if you don't pull out the greatest common factor in the first step, you can always factor out a little bit more, and eventually you will uh, f have factored out the greatest common factor.